Hi, it's Katrina. Despite the myth that sharks are lean, mean killing machines, the more we learn about them, the more fascinating they become. From advanced problem-solving skills to making friends, here are eight fascinating shark behaviors. Number eight, do sharks sleep? Even though we've been researching them for years, shark sleeping is still a mystery. One popular theory that has been spread around the whole world is that sharks don't need to sleep, and that if they stop moving for any significant period of time, they'll die. This isn't exactly the case, and it depends on the shark. Sharks breathe by filtering water through their gills to process oxygen, so people started to think that they had to move constantly. Some species of sharks do need to swim constantly, but others, like the nurse shark, have these things called spiracles that force water across their gills, allowing them to stay still and rest. Also, sleep in the animal kingdom is kind of hard to define. Sharks don't bunker down and tuck themselves in or anything like that, but they can slow down some bodily functions to a slow crawl so they can rest. They can make their brain less active and sleep swim, because swimming is controlled by their spinal cord, not their brain. Just as interesting is that when sharks like Caribbean reef sharks, nurse sharks, and lemon sharks are inactive or resting, you'll see them lying on the ocean floor, but they'll actually keep their eyes open and still watch any nearby fish or divers so that they give the illusion of being awake. But are they? Who knows? Do you think sharks sleep? Let me know in the comments below. Number seven, instinct versus intelligence. Due to the nature of sharks, they are driven by their senses more often than not. This is because of their lateral line system that runs throughout their bodies. Their bodies are attuned to pick up certain stimuli and react to it very quickly. This has driven the belief that sharks are actually creatures of pure instinct, but that's not exactly true. While some things that they do are pure instinct, it's not always the main thing that drives them. Instead, they'll get information via their senses, whether it be sight, sound, smell, or taste, and they'll react how they feel is appropriate. This is why there are many inconsistencies between the various kinds of sharks. For example, there are numerous sharks that are considered solitary creatures, and many of them are, but they are also social. Sand tiger sharks are very social and will hunt alone, and then every once in a while join in with a family group, similar to those like elephants and gorillas. They will often change their mind depending on the circumstances. Some species will come together to hunt in packs or when it seems to benefit them. Lemon sharks have very complex social behaviors and make friends with one another. There is no survival advantage, they just like hanging out. Because many people think that sharks are just run by their instinct, they think that sharks aren't very intelligent. While many sharks don't have the biggest of brains and seem to run on autopilot like the blue shark, the mako shark has a huge brain and can learn quickly, assess risk, and perform tasks. We are just now starting to understand intelligence versus instinct in sharks. Number six, working together. Like I mentioned before, many sharks will form groups and work together. When you think of social animals, sharks probably weren't high on that list. It seems like we are always shown a lone fin cutting through the water in order to get to an unsuspecting prey. Every shark for themselves. But more and more, scientists are witnessing sharks working together, and they are very efficient at it. In Smitswinkel Bay in South Africa, a whale had gotten partially beached. A group of seven sharks detected this whale and saw an opportunity to eat. However, because of its partially beached body, they couldn't get to it directly in order to feed. Somehow they worked together and were able to move the whale into deeper waters where they could chow down. Problem solving skills put to work. Don't ask me how they figured it out. Seven sharks working towards a single goal is highly impressive. That takes a level of intelligence and trust that isn't always associated with sharks. Poor beagle sharks have also been known to come together and play. They will chase each other with kelp in their mouth and roll over and over. And now for number five. But first, if you are a returning subscriber, welcome back and thank you so much for your support. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the latest videos. Number five, be the prey. Sharks are the apex predators of the oceans, especially the largest ones like the great white, tiger, and bull. But if you look at these sharks and then study their prehistoric past, you'll realize that they weren't always this way. Some of them had to evolve in order to become the fierce and efficient hunters that they are now. A great example of this is the mako shark. Mako sharks love to eat bluefish tuna, which is a very fast fish. 
Scientists believe that after struggling to catch the bluefish tuna, the mako shark started to adapt its body so that it would be more streamlined and fast like its prey. When a predator and prey begin to have similar genetic traits over time, this is called convergent evolution. This form of evolution is one that can be started by both predator and prey alike. They'll notice the traits of the other and then start molding their body like them. In the case of the bluefish tuna and the mako shark, both of them now have centralized muscle structures. This has been likened to pistons, which help propel both fish and shark in ways that other fish just can't do. This is why the mako is the fastest shark in the ocean today. The mako also uses its tail very effectively. Its shape, which is more crescent-shaped than other sharks, allows it to cut through the water easier, thus making it faster. This difference in shape also allows for more straightforward movement, making it even more like a missile. To learn more, be sure to check out the video on mako sharks when you finish this one. Sharks and dolphins have also developed similar genetic traits because they are both made for speed in the water to catch prey. For a shark to know that it needs to grow and then force its own evolution is incredible on numerous levels. Number 4. Best Hunting Strategies A big misconception about sharks is how they kill prey. Many people think that because of their sharp teeth, powerful bodies, and aggressive behavior that they just go after something, eat it, and be done with it. But that's not true. Their behaviors are much more refined when it comes to how they hunt. For example, while they can eat during the day, they prefer to eat at night when fish aren't expecting them to show up. In fact, it's well documented that sharks have many strategies for hunting depending on the species. After all, they are apex predators for a reason. Some will beat their prey with their speed and just grab them once in range. However, the great white shark and the angel shark will actually use ambush tactics to get their prey. At times, they'll ram their prey to stun them first, then grab them. Or, as makos and great whites have shown, they'll ram from below, grabbing the tuna, fish, or seal and lunge out of the water, then slam them down on the surface of the water in order to stun them. But sharks also know how to do their hunting effectively. They wait to use certain strategies so that they won't lose too many calories, which they use to travel incredible distances. So as you can see, they aren't just vicious hunters, they're calculating ones. Another amazing case that was caught on tape was when a humpback whale carcass appeared on the shore of Ponta, Mozambique. It was washed up on the beach and over 60 sharks of various species, including dusky, tiger, and bull, took turns ripping hunks of meat out of the whale. One of the tiger sharks also beached itself to keep eating, but a large wave came along and the shark was able to return back to the water. Number 3. Migration Patterns most sharks migrate using electroreception to go to warmer waters, follow schools of food like fish, seals, and whales, and mate and birth their pups. Most sharks, except great whites and makos, are cold-blooded, so they have to migrate to the south in winter and north during the summer to stay within the necessary temperature range. Thanks to tracking devices, we know great white sharks will migrate from one feeding ground to another and travel around 2,500 miles in open ocean to get to where they need to go. They will swim and drift dive, which is when they stop swimming and their momentum carries them forward and then they drift downward, like when you're on a bike and pedal really hard and then just coast. Other sharks won't really migrate that much at all, for example the nurse shark and the bonnethead shark, which will stay in a range of about 160 kilometers. Sharks will return to the same breeding grounds year after year to protect their young from predators for a little while, usually shallower, warmer waters where they can't become an easy meal. I have some good news for you. After several decades of decline, numbers of great white sharks in the North Atlantic are finally increasing, and a shark nursery has been found near Montauk, Long Island. Number 2. Glowing Sharks Bioluminescence is nature's way of giving living things the power to glow in the dark. There are two kinds of shark that were discovered recently that have the ability to glow. The first is the aptly named lantern shark family, and the second is the kite fin shark. Most fish bioluminescence by using their light organs, photophores. However, shark luminescence works in a different way. They emit light from photophores, which helps them camouflage themselves and communicate with each other. The lantern shark is able to control the amount of light it emits, and it can emit just enough to make itself blend in with its environment. The light from the ocean's surface would cause any creature caught in it to make a shadow or a silhouette. But, the lantern shark knows a magic trick and actually glows its body so that it matches the light in such a way that its shadow disappears. Ta-da! Then there's the velvet belly lantern shark, which actually has an entire spine that glows. 
This adaptation makes it so that it can ward off predators that dare get too close to it. Number one, body language communication. Have you ever wondered how sharks communicate with one another? After all, they can't talk or make sounds like other animals. So how do they make it so that other sharks know exactly what they're saying, even though they aren't saying anything? The answer is that they are very talented at communicating through body language. Sharks have learned a very intricate and detailed way of communicating by the way they move their bodies. For example, if a shark wants to look strong and imposing, they'll stiffen up and open their mouths, or they'll arch their backs to seem like they're in an attack posture. They'll also swim in certain ways to help show that others are in their area or domain. When things get a little hairy, sharks have been known to slap surface water with their tails or to jump out of the water and slam into it in order to lay their claim or to ward off other sharks from trying to steal their prey. So while it may not seem like it, sharks do indeed talk and they make their intentions known to their own kind without hesitation. Divers and shark experts are amazed by the subtle complexities of shark lingo, but as they'll tell you if you watch Shark Week, as long as you read the signs and maintain eye contact, you should be fine. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something new about sharks today. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye!